Excelsior. Welcome, true believers, to EP Daily Stanley Spectacular. Today on the show, we're honoring the legendary comic creator's 90th birthday with an amazing look at his life and creations. I really relate to all of them, especially when I'm writing them. When I write each one, I am that character. Sean talks to Stan about his dynamic team up with one of Japan's most marvelous manga artists. Ultimo is my supreme creation. All the others were leading up to Ultimo. Stan Lee's superheroes are big business at the box office, so we'll take a look at some of his mightiest movies. Guys, I'm bringing the party to you. We run through some of Stan the Man's most memorable movie appearances, plus a sensational look at his influences on video games and much more. Enough said. I'm your host, Victor Lucas, bringing you the latest in everything cool every single day. Stan Lee is an inspiration to me and to so many others. He's created countless beloved stories and timeless characters. Even at the age of 90, he continues to contribute to the entertainment world. This is his spectacular story. Born December 28, 1922, Stan is the man who most famously co-created your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He's also responsible for a plethora of other characters from the obscure to the now movie star famous. He got his start working as an assistant at Timely Comics, which would eventually become Marvel Comics. The first superhero that Lee co-created was The Destroyer, who appeared in Mystic Comics number six. However, it wasn't until many years later that his more recognizable characters made their debut. In the late 1950s, Lee was tasked with creating a superhero team to rival the Justice League of America from DC Comics. However, Stan became dissatisfied with his career and even considered leaving the industry. Luckily, his wife Joan persuaded him to take a risk and develop characters that interested him. The end result was the superhero quartet known as the Fantastic Four. This paved the way for a multitude of complex individuals. Instead of creating the perfectly balanced do-gooders, Lee co-created heroes with flaws. Although they had superhuman qualities, they were still relatable because of traits like egotism and bad tempers. They were social outcasts, characters with disabilities, and even some who worried about day-to-day -day concerns like paying bills and impressing girlfriends. Of course, Stan would go on to co-create hundreds of other characters that would grace comic books, TV shows, films, and video games. His impact on pop culture and the entertainment world is unrivaled. Bree, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, Vic. Now, we've only briefly touched on the history of Stan Lee, but it was outlined recently in great detail in a powerful documentary. Mary spoke with Stan the Man about the experience, which he found kind of bizarre. With great power, the Stan Lee story is the story of you and your life and your career. How did you first get involved with the director to create this film? Well, that nut came to me and said, let's do a uh, documentary about your life. And I said, you gotta be kidding. I said, at least wait till I'm dead. And the next thing I know, he's following me around, he's taking pictures and he's interviewing people about me. And I said, he's really serious. And I didn't have much time to work on it. And every so often he'd show up and show me some clips which were embarrassing as hell. I can't do it. Come on, get up. I'm no good. No, I won't do it. I love the name though, with great power, because it's from the quote, with great power comes great responsibility. And it'll kid people into thinking I have power. You've created a lot of superheroes over the years and a lot of superhumans. Which of your characters do you most relate to? Let's see, certainly not the Hulk. I really relate to all of them, especially when I'm writing them. When I write each one, I am that character. You know, you get into the feeling of it. I love Spider-Man. I don't relate to him that much because I wasn't quite as nerdy when I was a kid. I wasn't as bright in science, but I did have a better social life than he had, although we were even poorer than he was. So I guess we had a lot in common. I'd like to think I related to Tony Stark. Really, Stan? Tony Stark? I would have pegged you for more of a Peter Parker guy. Now, we all know Marvel's arch nemesis is DC, but despite that fact, Stan has never been labeled the villain. Even his fierce foes enjoy working with him and are inspired by his contributions to the industry. Don't believe me? Well, true believers, set your sights on this. If you go back even to the 70s, you know, he was the one who took comics to the college campuses and spoke about co comics in those days and addressed it to an older audience. Not just it was about kids and eight-year-olds reading it, but really talking directly to people and raised just the, the level of awareness, the depth of the characters and the stories, and was out there pounding the drum and always a positive voice and always a positive force. And that's something that we can never have enough of. 
I feel like we're very lucky to have him. He's kind of our emissary, and he's created so many comics, so many iconic characters that still influence us to this day, and I, I think he's kind of given us all our jobs, so we owe him a lot. For me personally, I was introduced to comic books through a number of different books, but there was one in particular from Marvel. It was a hardcover, sort of the origins of Marvel comics that he wrote, and all the origin stories for all the main Marvel characters. And I just remember being transfixed by this book and just reading it over and over. And so to me, he really introduced me to the world of comics and the storytelling and how he really took these characters and built in weaknesses and made them very human and relatable. And that was what kind of got me into the stories. I was always into the art, but the stories I really got into because of Stan's work. I think the coolest thing I ever saw was when I was at uh, Baltimore at the Harvey Awards um, this just last year. Stan Lee came up to present an award and he had, you know, two women with him that were, were there to help him walk. And he, after he gave his speech, he walked by them and he put his hands on the step railings and he swung himself down. <laughs> and I was like, God, that would hurt me to do that. He like skipped all of the steps and everybody in the audience gasped. They were like, you know, because it was like, is he going to make it? And he was like so agile, he was like out of there before anyone knew. And the two women that were supposed to help him were just like, what? I think he's so agile because he's actually Spider-Man. Yeah, and DC better watch out because Stan Lee doesn't rest. In fact, he co-created his first manga comic not too long ago. That's right. It's titled Ultimo, and I remember our very own Sean Hatton sat down with Stan to talk about it. We know Stan Lee from having created the Fantastic Four, X-Men, Spider-Man, Iron Man, just to name a few of my favorite comics. Now he's created Ultimo. Stan, what is Ultimo all about? Well, Ultimo is really, all the others were leading up to Ultimo. Ultimo is my supreme creation. It's a Karakoti Doji. You know, something like that. Ka Karakuri Doji? Yes, of course. I wanted to see if you knew how to pronounce it. Ultimo was my basic idea, but Takei Sun has taken it and he has written it and he has illustrated it and done a magnificent job. I love the Japanese people. I've been to Japan a number of times. And when this opportunity came along, I couldn't say no. It was something I wanted to do. So much action on the still page. I can't wait to see this thing animated. I hope you've got people working on it right now. Well, we're thinking about it, that's for sure. And you can be sure anything that is successful in one form of the media, anything that's successful in a comic book, if it's successful enough, it'll eventually be either an animated cartoon or a movie or any combination of the three. So remember, you heard it first from me. Ultimo, it is the ultimate adventure story. Hey, you know something? You're a damn good interviewer. Well, thank you. You're, you're a damn good interviewee. Oh, we know that. <laughs> Sean, that's quite the compliment, especially coming from him. We're going to take a look at Stan Lee's influence on the movie world right after this short break. But first, some birthday wishes. Happy birthday, Stan. He's 90, he's still here, and he's an icon in the business. Good grief. I mean, from someone who was a fan that, you know, thought of Stan Lee as like the, the equivalent of the Walt Disney of comic books. Congratulations to him for all of his success. Happy birthday, Stan. Hope you have another 90th. Happy birthday, Stan. Stan Excelsior. Happy birthday. Be good, Stan. We love you, man. Hey, Stan, from a British girl in New York. We're all wishing you a very happy birthday. I never in a million years when I was writing these things thought that they'd be successful movies. I just hoped the books would sell and i keep my job. Welcome back to EP Daily's Stan Lee Spectacular. I still can't believe he's 90. I know, it's amazing. And although he continues to have a huge impact on the world of comics, 2012 has been a marvelous year for his characters on the big screen. Two of this year's biggest films owe a great deal to Stan Lee, The Avengers, and The Amazing Spider-Man. And we covered both films. Of course, the biggest challenge was bringing these iconic characters to life using visual effects, a technique that Stan Lee truly appreciates. Visual effects are so important in today's movies, today's action movies, today's superhero movies, that without them, you've got no movie. Practical effects, visual effects, when they come together is when you have beautiful things happening, like the Silver Surfer character that I played. That's a prime example. It started with me in a muscle suit. Oh, that is cool. The mask that transformed my head and face into this very handsome, stoic being. Spectral motion, they created that look on me. 
Weta Digital, they did the digital effects that went over me. Talk about a collaboration. That character is so beautiful, and the digital age hasn't ruined anything. It's actually given us more opportunities to create creatures we couldn't do before. Seeing the Silver Surfer fly like he did would have been not the same experience 20 years ago. The effects team behind the Avengers also had the challenge of making Iron Man take flight. What was it like for you, having worked on the first two Iron Men, to see that character specifically grow? Each time we have to discover something different, and Joss wanted us to take what we've learned from one and two and then elevate it to a different level. We wanted to make sure that Iron Man was fighting and as heroic as possible, and that meant evolving how he flies and how he fights. I'm bringing the party to you. I've always wanted to make a classic superhero movie. I've wanted to put a comic book on screen. But very early on, what I told them was, I kind of want to make a war movie. I really want to put these guys through the paces. I want to make it hard on them. And they were very excited by that, and we pulled that off. You could never see Iron Man flying in the air, shooting bolts down below without visual effects. It couldn't be done. Creating the Hulk, making him believable, making sure that his third time out in the movies was something that was well received, that was the big challenge. You're sitting there and they're like, okay, now I look up on the walls of the buildings, there's aliens there. And you're like, what do they look like? They're just really scary. And now the, the sky's gonna open up and, and so they're yelling these things at you and you're in a green cube. I don't know how they do them. I wish I did. I wish I were one of them. Yes, the visual effects are awesome, but I'd just like to say that Stan Lee is a visionary. He saw and developed things that we were never able to recreate on the big screen until now, and we can only do it because of the many technological advancements. That being said, he also created versatile characters with vulnerabilities, and that's what makes them truly timeless. Longtime Marvel collaborator Brian Singer agrees. I think the X-Men universe is popular because there are many characters that people can identify with. And not everyone identifies with the same characters, but there's such a variety, and everyone's ultimately an outcast. At some point in all of our lives, we feel like outcasts. I wouldn't say he's an outcast, but the Amazing Spider-Man does face his fair share of challenges. Peter Parker is unique. People will say, oh, of course he's a hero, he's a Spider-Man. No, Spider-Man comes later. He became Spider-Man because Destiny picked the right guy to give these powers to. Peter Parker always has tragedy nipping at his heels. A lot of tough things happen to him. But he's got this humor and this levity and this buoyancy. What makes Spider-Man great is his heart. Stan Lee would agree. And just as Tobey Maguire was a great Peter Parker, so is Andrew Garfield. He's incredibly real. The fans love him. Although Andrew Garfield did learn that with great power comes great responsibility. I knew it was so important to me and to therefore millions of people. I actually held on to that feeling of responsibility in the hope that it would spur me to work harder and harder and harder. And I did. I didn't sleep very, very much. But I think it was a positive thing to be a fan and to be playing the part. Iron Man is another iconic iconic Stan Lee character and he'll return to the big screen in 2013 for Iron Man 3. Tony Stark himself, Robert Downey Jr., told us that it's important to keep things basic while also taking risks. The truth be told is after Avengers you can't really get any more complex and inclusive than that so we're afforded the opportunity to take some risks and go back to some basics with Tony. Years ago you had people who just were comic book fans and they were the writers. Today, you have people who are published novelists, even writers of best-selling books and screenwriters, and they all want to write comics and graphic novels because they're all thinking, if this is a good one and people discover it, they'll make a big movie of it. Did it work? Superheroes in New York, Kimmy. Do you remember me? Sure don't. Look great, Hef. You know, I guess one person can make a difference. Enough said. Hey, I got him jumping pretty good. I have an idea. Jump and punch.
Welcome back to EP Daily. We are just about to turn the page on our Stanley Spectacular. Before the break, we looked at Stan's influence on movies and comics, but did you know he's done his fair share for the world of gaming? That's right, and there have been a ton of games featuring the Hulk and the Avengers, but nobody can compete with Spider-Man. And when Jose spoke with Stan about the web slinger, he reflected on the evolution of the character. Is it cool for you to see this sort of unique, the different variations of Spider-Man as he's gone throughout the years? Yeah, and you see what happens whenever a new writer takes over a strip, and you know how many writers have done Spider-Man, they don't want to write it exactly like the guy before them. So each time a new writer took over, each time a new editor took over, there were always little subtle changes. And I think that's good, because it keeps the readers interested. As long as they keep the basic concept sound, I think these variations are really good. Is that a cartoon pig? Focus! The developers behind the 2010 title Shattered Dimensions also put their own spin on Spider-Man by including not one, but four versions of the iconic wall crawler. Four variations in the game. You have the Amazing, you have the Ultimate, the 2099, and the Noir. Which one is your particular favorite? I like them all. I, I really couldn't find a favorite. Obviously, I love the original. Did you ever think it would get as big as this to where he's in movies and video games and now a video game where there's that I can't even keep one Spider-Man in a game. They have to put multiples of himself in a game. Oh, sure. I knew that years later I'd be sitting up here being interviewed for the video games and being uh, doing cameos in the movies. I knew it the minute I made up the character. I could see it all ahead of me. Of course not! The real Stanley is so humble, I don't think he could have imagined where he would be right now, still happily working at age 90. Yeah, and Jose had the privilege of interviewing Earth's Mightiest Hero not once, but twice, the second time they spoke about another game he was proud to be a part of, 2011's Spider-Man Edge of Time. What is it like for you getting to know, create characters, and then all of a sudden years later have them in so many video games and so many movies, and now you got a brand new Spider-Man to work with? What is that like for you? Well, I'm kind of jealous. Spider-Man is all over the place, and I'm just right here sitting in one room being interviewed, and he's having all the fun. But seriously, it's great. The Spider-Man video game is like the most expensive, greatest movie. It's not only Spider-Man, all of the Marvel characters, they're all over. Sometimes I have to pinch myself, it's hard to believe. Stan, thank you so much. Okay, it was a pleasure, thank you. That's gonna be hard to top. That interview may have been hard to top for Jose, but I think Stan topped it by becoming a playable character this year in The Amazing Spider-Man. He has his own mission, basically, where you have to collect pages of his latest script, which then unlock a comic book that is unique to the Stanley pack. And he also recorded a lot of lines. Don't try this at home, kids! Woo a lot of people are approaching Stan as a kind of a cameo, like what he's done in a couple of movies. But we wanted to make something that was not just make him appear at some point. We wanted him to be the hero for once. Oh, I'm definitely going to tweet about this. Happy birthday, Stanley! You're doing an incredible job. Where do you go from here? Probably home to go to sleep. I've done a lot of interviews. <laughs> all right, let me give you the kind of answer a writer should give you, all right? Wherever fate will take me. Stanley, happy birthday to you, my friend. Listen, I just want to say thank you for creating all the wonderful things that you've created. 90 years old today, here's to another 90. I think you can do it because I'm pretty sure you're a superhero as well. Thank you so much for making the amazing that you've made. Happy birthday. The fact that you just keep on going and keep giving so much of yourself into everything that you do is just amazing. Happy birthday, Stan the man. You're my superhero. Excelsior, enough said. Believers, welcome back to EP Daily's Stan Lee Spectacular. He just turned 90, so we've been reminiscing about all of our time spent with him and celebrating all of his accomplishments. He has a huge heart and is a bit of a softy, so we weren't surprised to learn that he was putting a new spin on the classic tale of Romeo and Juliet. Miri spoke to him about the graphic novel. 1821 Comics and POW Entertainment have partnered to create Romeo and Juliet The War. Why revisit Romeo and Juliet? Let's put it this way, Romeo and Juliet, it is the 
greatest love story ever told and the most famous. But there's action also. There's conflict. And Terry Dugas and I, we decided we're going to do Romeo and Juliet, The War. And we'll do it in such a way that superhero fans would love it. But yet, people who are into Shakespeare, they too will love it. Because all we've done is taken the feeling of the original masterpiece, put it a little bit into the future, where we have cyborgs and medically advanced humans. But it's still the same story. In fact, I'm getting so thrilled talking about it now. I can't wait till this interview is over and I can go and read it again. You've created a lot of individual, unique, new superheroes. What made you decide to go back and revisit such iconic characters? The challenge. It's something that will be so difficult to do, but if we do it right, it'll be another masterpiece. We've been working on it for a few years. I think we've done it right, and I think the fans are going to love it. What do you hope fans get out of Romeo and Juliet, The War? Oh, I think they're going to get a great story and a surprising story, but they're also going to get some of the most awesome artwork. It's beautiful. If you missed anything in the show or you just want to watch it again, you can visit us at g4tv.ca or go to our website at epdaily.tv. You can also find us on Facebook under Electric Playground and follow us on Twitter at epdailytv. Hey, listen, we've also got a cool podcast for you to listen to at vixbasement.com and an EP Daily app for your mobile phone. I just want to say, Stan, not only are you a creative influence, but a true inspiration. You're humble, genuine, funny, and people just enjoy your company. So I hope you've had an amazing birthday. Vic, you think you'll still be hosting EP at 90? Of course. And on behalf of everybody here at EP Daily and Reviews on the Run and anyone who's ever dreamed of being a superhero, I want to wish you a very happy 90th birthday, Stan, and many more to come. Excelsior! Happy birthday, Comic-Con style, let's do this. On behalf of the Marvel Universe, Deadpool would like to say a very special happy birthday to the one, the only, Stan the Man Lee. Happy birthday, you are seriously an inspiration to anyone who wants to go into anything creative. Happy birthday, Stan Lee. Hey, Stan Lee, I'm Donkey Kong and I want to wish you a happy birthday. 